Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to Topic 3.8.2.2 Regulation of Transcription and Translation from the AQA A Level Biology Specification. As always, let's start with a look at our specification. First of all, we should know that in eukaryotes, transcription of target genes can be stimulated or inhibited when specific transcriptional factors move from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. We should know about the role of the steroid hormone estrogen in initiating transcription. Then we should know the epigenetic control of gene expression in eukaryotes and be able to define epigenetics. We should know how changes in gene function are caused by changes in the environment that inhibit transcription by increased methylation of the DNA or decreased acetylation of associated histones. We should also know the relevance of epigenetics on the development and treatment of disease, especially cancer. Note that I will cover this in my next video when I talk about gene expression and cancer. And finally, we should know how in eukaryotes and some prokaryotes, translation of the mRNA produced from target genes can be inhibited by RNA interference, also abbreviated to RNAi. So let's make a start. Transcription factors, which include some hormones, move from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. Here they bind to specific promoter regions near the start of their target genes. There are two types of transcription factor, activators and repressors. Activators increase the rate of transcription, making it easier for RNA polymerase to bind to the start of the target gene. Repressors, on the other hand, decrease the rate of transcription, making it harder for RNA polymerase to bind to the start of the target gene. The specification specifically mentions the role of the steroid hormone estrogen in initiating transcription. Estrogen is a steroid hormone. Steroids are lipids, so can diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer of the cell surface membrane of cells. In the cytoplasm, estrogen binds to an estrogen receptor, also known as ER-alpha, to form an estrogen-estrogen receptor complex. This passes into the nucleus where it acts as a transcription factor which binds to the promoter region of a specific gene. Note that the estrogen-ER-alpha complex acts as a transcription factor for many genes and can both activate and repress different genes. Next we need to know about epigenetic control of gene expression. First of all, what is epigenetics? Epigenetics involves heritable changes in gene function without changes to the base sequence of DNA. These changes are caused by changes in the environment that inhibit transcription by two main factors, increased methylation of DNA and decreased acetylation of histones. In increased methylation of DNA, a methyl CH3 group becomes attached to the DNA coding for a gene. The methyl group always attaches at a CPG site, where a cytosine base and a guanine base are next to each other in the sequence. The binding of the methyl group changes the DNA structure, making it harder for transcription factors to bind to promoter regions or for RNA polymerase to transcribe DNA. Note that there are lots of CPG sites found in promoter regions, meaning that genes may be silenced. Then we also have decreased acetylation of associated histones. DNA is wound around histones to form chromatin. If acetyl groups bind to chromatin, this reduces attraction between the DNA and the histones. Chromatin is said to be relaxed, making it easier for transcriptional machinery to bind to DNA. This increases the rate of transcription. If acetyl groups are removed from histones, the opposite happens. Attraction between DNA and histones increases, and chromatin is said to be closed. This makes it harder for transcriptional machinery to bind to DNA which decreases the rate of transcription. Note that epigenetic changes can be inherited by offspring if they occur in gametes. Also, remember to always refer to acetylation of associated histones, never say acetylation by itself. Then we also have RNA interference, which can also be abbreviated to RNAi with a lowercase i. In eukaryotes and some prokaryotes, translation of the mRNA produced from target genes can be inhibited by RNAi. How can this happen? Well, small interfering RNA, siRNA in short, is a short double-stranded RNA molecule. This siRNA associates with several proteins, whereby first the double strand is separated into two strands, and then one strand combines with a protein. Next, the RNA protein complex binds to an mRNA strand that is complementary to the siRNA strand. The protein cuts the mRNA into fragments. And finally, a processing body degrades the fragments, meaning that the mRNA is not translated. Great, that would be this part of the specification covered. We have covered how, in eukaryotes, transcription of target genes can either be stimulated or inhibited when specific transcriptional factors move from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. 
We have also covered the role of estrogen in initiating transcription. We have defined epigenetics and have covered the epigenetic control of gene expression, including how transcription can be inhibited by increased methylation of DNA and decreased acetylation of associated histones. I will cover the relevance of epigenetics on the development and treatment of disease with a focus on cancer in my next video. And finally, we have covered how in eukaryotes and some prokaryotes, translation of mRNA can be inhibited by RNA interference. That would be it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment. Next time, we will be covering gene expression and cancer.